Today, we're going to be diving into something crucial for .NET developers, validation. Specifically, we're going to compare two popular validation methods, data annotations and fluent validation. So if you're confused about which one to use in your next .NET project, stick around as I'll break it all down for you. Validation is key when working with any kind of input, whether it's from forms, APIs or databases. In the .NET world, we have two main players. We have data annotations, which is more baked into the framework. We also have Fluent Validation, an external library which is gaining a lot of popularity. Let's break down the differences, and we'll start off with data annotations. We're going to set some data annotations for validation in this user model. Now to do that, we can add some attributes. We're going to start off with the name property, we're going to use the required attribute and we're going to set an error message for that stating that the name is required. Also for the name property, we're going to use the string length attribute. It's going to be a maximum length of 50 characters and the error message for that will be name cannot exceed 50 characters. Now we're going to look at the age property and we're going to use the range attribute. It's a minimum of 18 and a maximum of 100 and the error message for that will be age must be between 18 and 100. Then we'll move on to the email address. We're going to use the email address attribute. We're going to state the error message for that is going to be invalid email format. For the is premium member and discount properties, we're going to add our own custom validation. In order to do that, we can implement the iValidate object interface. The method we need to include is this validate method. We can write our own custom validation in here. What we're going to do is if it's a premium member and the discount is lower or equal to zero, we're going to throw an error. We call yield return new validation result. We can state our error message in there. Customer should have a discount if they're a premium member. And we can also specify which properties it links to. So it links to the discount, so we're going to get the name of discount and add it in there. Data annotation validation is already built into ASP.NET Core Web API and MVC controllers. So all we need to do is set up the endpoint. And we're going to do that. So we're going to set up an endpoint with a HTTP post type. We'll return an I action result. We're going to call it create and we'll pass in the user model type and call it user model. And we're simply going to return no content and then we're going to test it. Let's have a look at this request body. It has some invalid values into the properties. For example, the name hasn't got anything. The age is 135 when it should be between 18 and 100. And the email address is invalid. If we run that endpoint, we get a 400 bad response and it specifies our error messages. Let's go ahead and fix it. Let's add a valid name a valid age and a valid email address. When we execute that now, we get a 204 response. We've created this user service and we wish to implement this method into our validation. We've added the user service as a scope dependency and dependency injection. We go into the user model, we can come down to our validate method. We've got the validation context as a parameter and we can use that to get the instance of the service. So to do that, what we do is we'll create a new variable and we'll call the validation context dot get required service and we'll pass in the I user service. Now this method doesn't support asynchronous. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get the result. So we're going to pass in the method and the email address as part of the parameter and then we need to get the result. So that will specify whether it's true or false. If it's true, we're going to throw the validation. So once again, we'll call yield return new validation result. And we're just going to specify that the customer exists. And for the name of it, we're just going to call the user model and specify that as the name. But when we run it, we get an error saying the customer exists. Just to note that the validate method will only run if property level validators are passed successfully. Let's now focus on fluent validation. First, we need to add some NuGet packages. 
So we go to Tools, New Get Package Manager, and Manage Packages for Solution. We do a browse for Fluent Validation. We need to add that one to our project. And because we're using Dependency Injection, as we're using an ASP.NET Core Web API, we also need to add the Dependency Injection extensions into our project. To add our validation through Fluent Validations, we need to create a new class and we need to inherit the Abstract Validator class, which we get from the Fluent Validation Assembly. And we pass in whatever model that we're validating as the generic type. Now we're going to add the same rules as we did with Fluent Validation. So we use the rule for, we get the user.name, we specify that it's not empty, and we can specify the error message saying name is required. We also specify the maximum length of 50. And for that, we can specify a message saying name cannot exceed 50 characters. We'll then do the same for the age. So we'll get the age. We'll specify the inclusive between. The minimum is 18. The maximum is 100. And with an error message specifying the age must be between 18 and 100. Next, we'll look at email. So we get the email and we'll specify that as an email address with a message stating invalid email format. And we'll also do it for the discount as well. So we'll do the rule for user.discount greater than zero, but we only want to do it when it's a premium member. So what we can do is we can call the when method. And we're just going to specify the is premium member is true. Then we can specify the message saying customer should have a discount if a premium member. To make this work in our ASP.NET Core Web API, we need to add it to dependency injection. So we'll set it as a scope lifetime, and the interface that we need is the I validator. We need to pass in the type that we're validating, which is the user model. And then as part of the implementation, we just add the validator class that we just created. We can then pass that in as a parameter in our user controller. Now to use it in our API endpoint, we need to do a bit of additional work. So we call our model validator and we call validate and we pass in the user model that we're validating. Now if the result is not valid, we're just going to return a bad request I'm going to specify some of the errors so we can call results.errors.select and we're going to get the property name and the error message. With our request body, we've got some invalid values in there. When we run it, we get the 400 response with all our error messages. Let's fix that. Put a name in of David, age of 40, and put in a valid email address. We now get the 204 response. We now want to add this user service method into our fluent validation class. Now, because we're using dependency injection, we can pass in the user service as part of the constructor. To make this work, we set up a new rule for email and we've had to pass in some parameters. One in particular is the email address. To make this work, we can call the user service. So we call user service dot does user exist async. We pass in the email address. And if that's the case, we return false, otherwise we return true. Now we need to make an additional change into our ASP.NET Core Web API. Because we're using asynchronous, we need to call it async when we validate it. So we need to mark the method as async, pass in the task type, then we state this to await, and we call validate async, and then run the application. In our request body, we have valid values, but when we execute it, we get a 400 bad response and we get our email specifying the error, the customer exists. Now that we've covered the basics, let's summarize the differences between data annotations and fluent validation. Data annotations can make your model class messy as it combines data structure with validation rules. Fluent validation keeps your validation logic separate, which prompts cleaner, more maintainable code. Data annotations are built into the .NET framework, so they don't require any extra libraries. Fluent validation is an external library, which means adding more dependencies to your project. 
data annotations lack async support. Any async calls will need to return the result before they can be used. Fluent validation has async support, meaning it's better supported at making calls to a database and third party services. So which one should you use? Use data annotations when you have simple validation rules, you want the built-in simplicity of .NET, you're working on smaller projects or prototypes where adding an external library might be an overkill. Use fluent validation when you need more complex validation logic, you want to separate validation logic from your models, you need better testability and cleaner code for larger projects. Let me know in the YouTube comments which one you prefer and why. And if you want to know more about the data annotations that were added to .NET 8, watch this video next. Both data annotations and fluent validation are great tools, but which one you choose is down to your project's needs. Just remember though that it's essential to include validation in your .NET project.